Hey guys, the Network Berg here. Hope you're doing well. In this video, we will be covering policy based routing, or better known on the marketing world as Mangles, on Router OS. So, this is going to be a bit of a fun video where we will just be discussing a bit about how policy based routing works, what our goal is with it, and then we'll do a bit of a practical lab where we will just implement policy based routing either routing different protocols over different paths or even different subnets as well. So this is something to be excited for because I know a lot of people have questions about Mangle rules. So let's dive into the video. Enjoy. So let's talk about policy based routing or in better terminologies on Microtech, we're going to be looking at what we call a mangle rule. Now, I'm just going to paint a bit of an example quickly so that we can properly discuss what we want to achieve with some policy based routing. And what I'm going to type here is ISP1 because I'm going to have two ISPs that's going to be delivering internet services to us. And I'll also just add an ISP2 so that we have the dual ISPs. And let's draw a little bit of a cloud around them so it looks like it's actually the internet or whatever. And there we go. Now we've got two ISPs. And typically, I might deliver the service now on a single router. Let me do that in a blue pen. And then in this router, we might have uplinks to these two ISPs equipment, and they might be delivering us some services. Maybe the one link is fiber and the other one is wireless, or it could be two fiber links or two broadband links, just so that we have dual internet. We can also set up some form of basic redundancy, but we'll look at like failover stuff in a different video. Right now, I just want you to focus on policy-based routing. Now, what does it actually entail? Let's just say I'm going to add a LAN network in here. And then what I want the policy routing to mean for you is whenever traffic gets to the router, the router's firewall based off of the route selection process will always look at the firewall rules that you might first have. And that is what mangles fall under as well. And then based off of whatever rules you might have on the firewall, it can then do something with that traffic. Now with mangles or policy based routing specifically, you're going to be looking at certain types of traffic and then you can force that traffic over a separate path, over a separate link. So this is why it's nice to have, let's say dual ISPs, because now you can set up a very basic form of load balancing where maybe you want all of your internet traffic to go out over the one link, but all of your browsing. So let's say your HTTP and HTTPS stuff that you want to send over a completely different ISP because you want to just have browsing just for that one link so that if the users are browsing a lot of internet services, then it doesn't cause issues for the rest of your network. Now, let me just highlight kind of what happens. So your computer will maybe get a, it will send an HTTP packet or request or whatever, and it will get to the router and the router now can make a decision based off what it sees. It sees an HTTP packet or HTTPS packet. And if there's any type of mangle rule to say, if it is HTTPS, push it out over this ISP and not the default route. So that is kind of what we can do with policy-based routing. And it doesn't have anything to do with the default routes either. You can literally make routing happen on a firewall level. So let's actually get onto a topology inside Eve. I'm just quickly going to navigate to my VM. All right, so here I've got my Eve topology open and we're going to do the same type of scenario on router six. I've actually configured another WAN link to that router so that you can see there is router six. Um, it's now got a link to router two and router three. Both of these links are being masqueraded out. So it's kind of like your typical CPE setup that you might see at a site. And really these links could be anything. It could be dual fiber, dual wireless, one wireless, one fiber, broadband, LTE, all kinds of stuff like that. But what it comes down to is there's two gateways out to the internet so that this device can do something. But we'd like to do a little bit of load balancing almost. And for that, we're going to use policy-based routing so that we can push maybe our web traffic over a different path so that the whole network isn't just congested the whole time. And a good example will be, I've got a an Eve Docker in here. And this Docker will now act as a host for us. And we can use this Docker to actually browse, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to use this to just go onto YouTube and run a video. And then with that video, we'll actually be able to just quickly get onto Winbox and then see what the interface is doing and just explain a bit what the setup is on Router 6 now. So let me just connect onto Ramon. 
get onto router 6. And I'm just going to minimize that other window so we don't see that in the background the whole time. But in essence, what's happened is I'm, I've got an Ether 1 and 2, which is my WAN links now. And it might be nice if I just give this a description like this so you understand what's where. So Ether 2 is my WAN 2, or my ISP 2, and my Ether 3 is now my LAN. Now what has happened is if we look at our IP addresses, Ether 1 has this IP subnet, Ether 2 has the other IP subnet, and if I look at my routing table, I've actually got two routes out to get out to the internet. I've set up a bit of a, a failover type of scenario here, but we'll talk about failover a little bit later or in a different video. This is just to make sure that both of the links were working. So I might just quickly run a ping out to Google, disable the current uh, route out, and we can see we've actually still got internet access. So we know that both of the links are actually working. All right, cool. So let's actually talk about how are we going to set up mangles or policy-based routing. So for this, you'll go into your IP firewall, you'll navigate your mangle, and in your mangle section, you can now actually set up lots of stuff. Mangle is actually one of my most favorite features on RouterOS because you can use this for almost anything. You can use it for packet manipulation. You can use this for your QoS. You can use it for route leaking. There's really so much that you can do with Mangle rules. But the only thing we're going to be tackling in this video is the policy-based routing where we're going to identify packets that match a very specific criteria and then be sending them over a different link. So what I could do is I can specify in my pre-routing or output chains, and this is very important that you understand that, only pre-routing pre and output chains are going to be doing this type of policy-based routing, this type of Mangle rules. The other chains won't work because it's already done stuff with the traffic in that regard. Pre-routing is perfect because this is telling the firewall before you do anything with the packet that you've received, I want you to mark it or identify it with something or do something with this packet. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark all of our browsing traffic, which will be HTTP and HTTPS. So what I could say is my protocol is TCP. My destination port is AT and 443 with the comma there. So I can use both ports. And... What I'm going to do now is just navigate to my actions and then I can set mark routing. Now, if I mark the routing, I'm in essence creating a new routing table that can be referenced to do something with this, with this traffic. So I'm just going to give it the routing mark of browsing and I'll just disable pass through, but it shouldn't be too, too much of an issue if you have it enabled. And there we can see there's actually stuff happening already on that uh, Mangle rule because we had that YouTube video running. So it's busy uh, doing some stuff. So we can see packets are already getting marked, but it's not effectively doing anything with the package yet because right now it's being marked, but there's no rules to find what to do with the traffic with the routing engine. So let's do something. First, I want you to take note of once I created that packet or that routing mark if you click here there's actually going to be a drop down for browsing which you can treat as its own routing table now vrfs also have their own routing tables which means the router can look at this routing list to determine what it's going to use for a destination you can only have one active route per destination which is these dark routes that you've seen if there's other routes, you know, then it's, it's not going to be overridden or it's not going to actually work. It's because it's going to take your preferred route that was issued by the route selection process. Okay, but if we want to make the browsing now go out over Ether2 instead of Ether1, because there you can see it's only coming in over Ether1 now. If we want that to come in over Ether2, we just need to route the traffic over Ether2. So in the routing table, I can just add a new route. The destination address, I can leave that as any. The gateway, I can make my router or ISP2 or WAN2's um, gateway, which was 101013. But now I'm going to select the routing mark for browsing. I'm going to say anything with the browsing routing mark, I want you to route over 101013. I'm going to apply that. And now that that's been applied, I actually want to navigate back to the interfaces. And we might just have to restart our browsing connection so that the firewall can start uh, referencing the new connections. 
So let's just stop this video. And then let's create or a new session to the internet. So let's go back onto the YouTube. Load up the video again. Go back here. And now we can see the traffic is actually coming in over Ether 2 instead of Ether 1. So this will actually allow now all of the browsing to be separated from the rest of the IP network because now browsing will go out over Ether 2. But all of my other services that I might be using on a day-to-day -day basis is still going out over Ether 1. So it won't disrupt me as much. And maybe Ether 2 just has a lot more bandwidth. Or maybe it's just better suited for browsing. So this is actually a very basic and quick and good example of just how to define a Mangle rule or a policy-based route so that you can reference your Mangle rule in your routing table and tell it what to do. Because if I maximize the routing table, you'll see the entry here in all, and we can see that the routing mark for it is browsing. Very interesting is that you can reference all of your routes in your main routing table. So this is why I can still use a gateway that's defined in the main routing table for the browsing routes because that gateway is still valid. It, it can still actually get there. All right, so th this is kind of just an example how to separate specific protocols. Um, another example that people tend to do, and let me just set up that scenario because maybe you've got a LAN network and then you've got, maybe you've got two LAN networks, two different customers, or maybe it's a LAN and a CCTV. Uh, let's call it CCTV. That, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. So let's say Ether4 is CCTV. Um, let's give Ether4 its own address quickly. Let's make that 172.16.01.24. Put that on Ether2. And now in this type of scenario, perhaps you want to have all of the traffic from your LAN network to go out over your main ISP or your WAN1 and all of your traffic for your CCTV to go out over your WAN2. And we'll accomplish that again with Mangle rules. So first I'd like to go to the firewall. I'm going to remove this HTTPS rule that we had. And then we can create two Mangle rules. So let's call this, um, it will also be for the pre-routing chain, but now we can specify our source address. So the first source address is going to be from our LAN subnet, which is 192.168.2.0/24. 192.168.2.0/24. I leave the destination blank, and I'm not going to specify any protocols in this case. I just want to say any traffic coming from 192.168.2.0/24. We're going to go into the action. We're also just going to mark the routing for that, and let's call this uh, to ISP1. And this time I'll leave the pass through on. And then we're going to take the same rule. Well, we could have copied it, but let's rather not copy. Let's do it like this. 172.16.0.1 slash 24, which is the CCTV range. And for the CCTV stuff, we also want to do mark routing, but we're going to call this uh, to ISP2. So let's make it to ISP2. Apply that. So now all of those packets will be marked from those two source subnets. And what I can do is in my routing tables, I can go back to all if I'd like to, or I could just go into that specific routing table and then I can set up my routes. So let's do it from all so we can actually see our gateways as well. So what I'll do is click on the plus. I'll say anything that wants to go to the internet. We'll use the gateway of ISP1 for the ISP1 routing mark, which will now be from the source of the LAN network. Let me apply that. And then similarly, I'll add another route, make the gateway 101013, which is my ISP2 gateway. But that routing mark will be for the to ISP2. I'm going to apply this. And then just to test to see if this works, I'm going to disable those other two initial default routes that I had going out. Also disable this browsing or remove the browsing route that we had. And let's see, from my uh, LAN PC, we, we can see the YouTube is still running. Let's just make sure we can still open it up. All right, so I can still open up YouTube and that should be going out over ISP1 now. If I go to my interfaces, I can see that goes out over ISP1. Now, if I quickly just want to emulate and see if it works for ISP2, or the LAN to not uh, subnet or the CCTV subnet, sorry. Let's just also create maybe 
I'll create another Docker quickly, Docker node. Uh, let's just give it a nice little icon as a another type of desktop. And then this Docker, I'm going to connect onto Ether4, which is in that CCTV subnet. Let's start up this Docker. And after this video, I'm going to delete the Docker. And this is just for showcasing now. So let's see, log in. Now I'm on this other Docker. Let me just quickly set up its IP details. So all I'm going to do is IF config, ETH zero. My address will be 172.16.0.2 slash 24. And then I also want to just add a DNS server quickly. So name server is 8888. Let's just save that. And let's see, can I... Oh, I need to add a default route out as well. So route, add default gateway, 172.16.01. This is just some Linux stuff. So if I now ping out, I can actually see I can get out to the internet. But the cool thing is this should be out over the ISP2. So we can just quickly test this by doing a trace route. And let's trace route out to 8.8.8.8. And I can see this leaves out over 10.1.0.13, which is perfect. And similarly, if I go back onto the initial uh, machine, which is this left one I just clicked on, I can do also a trace route from it. So trace route 8888. And this I'll see goes out over the ISP1 one address. Let's do the YouTube thing again, because this is actually quite nice just to see that the traffic actually um, is being generated because then you can see in real time on the interfaces that it's actually doing something. The only issue now is, well, it's not really an issue, but the CHRs that I'm using are limited to, um, I think one meg of traffic per interface on a trial run. So I, I can't go past one megabit on any of the CHRs, unfortunately. All right, but now I've got YouTube open on two different devices. Let's just look at Winbox, what it's doing. And there we can see both my WAN links are being used. Both of them are generating traffic. If I look at my torches, we should see the source traffic for WAN 1 is going to be going to our uh, LAN network, but uh, we will have to look actually on the uh, LAN interface and the CCTV interface to see the actual internal IPs. So here we can see 192.168.2.254 is doing a lot of connections to 197.80.135.13, and that is a megabit. And similarly, if I look at my CCTV, that should also now be generating a bit of traffic to YouTube on 172.16.02, which is the IP we assign. But this is nice because in this case, we now have two different LAN networks. So two different LAN networks sitting on the same router, but we've got two separate WAN uplinks and we were able to route each subnet over a different gateway so that they could both actually just load balance a little bit so we don't um, cause too much issues on the network so that was quite nice we'll end off the video here in the next video we will potentially look at some failover scenarios or we might be diving into ecmp anyways i'd like to thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you in the next video see ya